Hello and welcome to the Bible blog at MrKent.com. I'm Mr. Kent and today we're going to be taking a look at Genesis chapter 30 which uh, you can break into two parts. The first part is uh, the childbearing of Jacob's wives and their midwives and the second part is where Jacob uh, begins to grow his own flock of sheep um, using speckled and spotted as, uh, as his way of going about it. So we'll look at that. Uh, when we get to it. Anyway, um, I will be reading from the New King James Version, and uh, when you see s the text on the screen, that will be the King James Version. And in, if you're at the website and would like to follow along, over to the right, there's a link to BibleGateway.com. You can click on that and still uh, watch this video or follow along on that. It brings up a separate page. So you can uh, follow along there, and you can pick the version you like to go with. Uh, it's a pretty nice website, so I uh, I use it a lot. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I've been trying to keep these, uh, these uh, blogs short, and it's almost impossible in some cases to keep them short. So we're just going to take the time we need to get covered the material that we need to cover. Does that make sense? I hope so. All right. In the previous chapter, um, Leah had begun to bear children, and Rachel could not bear any children. And uh, so Leah, I believe, brought uh, forth three or four uh, boys, and, uh, and Rachel had brought none forth. So at verse 1 of chapter 30 is where we're going to take, take on from there. Now, when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said to Jacob, Give me children or else I die. Now, as you may or may not know, in, the, in that culture, uh, if a woman could not bear children, it was, it was more or less of a curse. And so um, she was just, she was really um, uh, wanting to bear children. And the, inter the sad thing is, is eventually she brought forth Joseph, and then uh, a few years later, she brought forth Benjamin. And in the process of bringing forth Benjamin, she did die. She died, died in childbirth. And uh, so I don't know if that had anything to do with her comment to her husband. <laughs> and it's kind of a sad thing that a woman dies in childbirth. But that's, that's how it went. So she did end up dying, uh, giving birth to children. And by the way, w further down the road in, in future chapters, uh, we're going to find out there's a reason why God does what he does. Uh, he withheld her ability to bear children until finally Joseph was born. And then that Joseph became um, Jacob's most favorite son. And if you know the story, he had 12, 12 sons, and Joseph was uh, the next to the youngest, and he got, he got special treatment because he was, the, he was the son of Rachel, who Jacob loved more than, than Leah. And so he was very special. And then, of course, that made his brothers jealous. And his brothers then sold him as a slave, which sent him over to Egypt, which uh, he finally became like the vice president of Egypt. And then during, during the famine, um, he was able to save uh, all of the other sons of, of uh, Jacob. So it was like a, a blessing uh, long delayed that uh, God did not allow Rachel to have children had that had that not had had she have had children uh, as easily as everybody else does then Joseph may not have been such a special uh, uh, young man and and Jacob wouldn't have treated him special and his brothers wouldn't have sold him and the famine would have come and the children of Israel and the uh, the the Israelite people would have died off. So God plans things out, not according to what we like, but according to what he desires. All right, let's get on with it. So in verse 2 then, Jacob's anger was aroused against Rachel, and he said, Am I in the place of God who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? So his wisdom, uh, knowing that God takes care of these things, and he didn't know exactly at that time how important it was that it was... God taking care of things. Verse 3, so she said, here's my maid Bilhah, go into her <clears throat> and she will bear a child on my knees and I also will have uh, children by her. Now, if you remember way back, uh, would, it would have been like her, uh, not her grandmother, but it would have been Jacob's grandmother, Sarah, who told Abraham to do the same thing. And so, uh, 
she said, go into Hagar and have a son by him because she was waiting and waiting and waiting and God had promised a son, but Isaac hadn't been born yet. So then Abraham went into Hagar and Ishmael was born. And uh, we've already, if you want to learn about that, go back and read some of the previous chapters, but, uh, or listen or whatever. Anyway, so, uh, so she tells him, uh, go into Bilhah and verse four, then she gave him Bilhah. Uh, her maid as a wife and that's an important word there he gave her as a wife and uh, in that culture that became he became married to her and Jacob went into her and Bilhah verse 5 conceived and bore Jacob a son and Rachel said God has judged my case uh, and he has also heard my voice and given me a son therefore she called his name Dan which means judge because judge uh, God has judged her case now, of course it wasn't her son it was Bilhah's son but but it became her uh, adopted son they didn't have adoption agencies back then you know <laughs> so they they went about it a little different way today that we have adoption agencies and it's a very much it's a big blessing that children who come from uh, all kinds of terrible backgrounds can can be adopted and uh, brought into a good God-loving family Verse 7, And Rachel's maid Bilhah conceived again, and bore Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister, and indeed I have prevailed. So she called his name Naphtali, which means my wrestling. So Rachel uh, and her sister, they, they, uh, <laughs> they probably weren't all that good of friends. Uh, verse 9, When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid and gave her to Jacob as a wife so now here comes the uh, the uh, the retaliation so now Leah uh, Jacob's other wife she's going to give her maid to to Jacob verse 10 and Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a son then Leah said a troop comes so she called his name Gad which means troop and Leah's maid Zilpah bore Jacob a second son. Then Leah said, I am happy for the daughters will call me blessed. So she called his name Asher, which means happy. And one of the interesting things that I've, I don't know, these names, this is what the moms called the sons, okay? So, so she would say, happy, come in, it's lunchtime. Or she would say, troop, uh, <laughs> you know, get your shoes on, we got to go. Uh, this was the names that they gave their children. That's kind of interesting. Uh, if we did that today, it'd be kind of weird. Anyway, verse 14. Now Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest. Reuben was the oldest son. He was Leah's uh, firstborn. Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said, please give me some of your son's mandrakes. Now, Reuben would have been like a teenager by now with all the time that's gone by, nine months for each one of these sons to be born. And so uh, he's he's not a child. He's a he's probably a teenager, and he's out helping with the wheat harvest. And out there in the field, there's these plants growing, which are called mandrakes. And uh, uh, I, I'm not much of a farmer. I grew up in downtown Seattle most of the time. Anyway, <laughs> so I have to I have to Google all this stuff. But uh, mandrake is considered a um, um, an herb that will uh, promote uh, childbearing, and so uh, this is uh, Rachel. You know, she's been barren all this time, and so she's hoping that she can have some of the mandrake so that she can bear children. And of course, uh, got to remember it was still in God's plan. So she says, you know, give me some of your mandrakes. Well, then verse fifteen. But she, that's Leah, said to her, It is a small matter, or is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Because uh, she was, because uh, Jacob was married to Leah first. He had to work seven years to get her. And it was by, it was, uh, well, anyway, we won't go in the background. If you've been following along, you know that uh, Jacob got kind of swindled there. So then after that, he married um, uh, uh, Rachel. And so Rachel then became. Uh, uh, his wife, but she couldn't bear children. Okay, so here's Leah saying, you've taken away my husband. Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? And of course, uh, Rachel said, therefore, uh, he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. 
So she's making a deal, says, you give me the mandrakes, hoping that those mandrakes are going to help her to, to uh, get pregnant. And um, uh, she believed that they had, you know, the, the, the power to do that. And whether they, they do or not, I don't know. But anyway, verse 16, then Jacob came out of the field in the evening. Then when Jacob came out of the field in the evening, Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. So um, from this picture that we get, he never went in much to Leah. He, you know, he lived most of the time in, in uh, uh, Rachel's tent. You know, they each had their own tent as we follow along and find out here. So, so... Uh, she goes out and she meets him and says, you're going to come into my tent tonight because I've purchased you. And uh, so um, verse 17, and God listened to Leah and conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. So he goes into Leah and she conceives there. And Leah said, God has given me my wages because I have given my maid to my husband. So she called his name Ishkar which means wages. So when she called him to dinner, she said, wages, come in to dinner. <laughs> All right, so she's, so there's another one now. And then Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God has endowed me with good and endow, uh, with a good endowment. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she called his name Zebulun, which means dwelling. So her heart's desire was for her husband to love her and want to be around her. And of course, as far as we know, that probably never happened because he didn't, he didn't have no desire to marry her. He was tricked into it by, uh, by Laban. Okay, so uh, verse 21, after she bore a daughter, or afterward, she bore a daughter and called her name Dinah. Okay, so we're going to learn more about Dinah coming down the road a ways. Verse 22, then God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. So, two things. First of all, she'd been praying and begging God, and he listened, and he opened her womb in his timing. But you get some of the times, you know, some of the words that we have in the English language don't really match the words that, uh, the words that God would use if he was telling this story and we were speaking in his language because it says, then God remembered Rachel. Well, it's not like he forgot Rachel. It's kind of like, um, you know, if, if you knew my birthday and my birthday is April 3rd, okay, so if you, you knew my birthday was coming up, you didn't want to, you know, you wanted to remember it and send me a card. It's like you didn't forget my birthday. You just wanted to remember to do something on that birthday. And that's what remembered means here. When God used, when the Bible uses the word remembered, that God remembered this, it was like according to his timing, he didn't, he hadn't forgotten it, but he wanted to do something on that specific day. So it says, God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb, and she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. And of course, as I spoke earlier, uh, it was a reproach to a woman who couldn't bear children. Verse 24, so she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. And of course, Joseph means he will add. Okay, now, so that's the first half of chapter 30. Now we get to the second half, verse 25. It came to pass when Rachel had borne Joseph that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own place and to my country. Because if you remember, Jacob had come from uh, down in um, the land of Canaan up into uh, which would be what would be uh, Syria. And uh, that's where Laban lived. And he'd gone up there to find a wife. Now he's got children and his family's growing and he wants to go back home. So verse 26, he says, give me my wages and my children for whom I have served, uh, for whom I have served you and let me go for you know my service, which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, please stay if I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. And of course, that's true, uh, because back in chapter 29, verse 9, uh, we saw where when he first met Rachel, she was herding uh, Laban's flock of sheep. 
that's the size of the flock that he had. Rachel could uh, be should her, could uh, drive that flock by herself. Now uh, he's got much more. He says, I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. And uh, there's all the different kinds of friends. He's making it sound like, uh, he says, please stay if I have found favor in your eyes. Well, obviously, um, <laughs> uh, he tricked him into the wrong wife and a few other things have happened we're going to find. So he didn't really um, uh, find favor. Uh, Jacob didn't find favor in, in his eyes. Verse 28, then he said, name me your wages and I will give it. So Jacob said to him, you know how I have served you and how your livestock have been with me. For what have you, for what you had before I came was little, uh, referring back to chapter 29, and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming, and now when shall I provide for my own house? So he said, that's Laban said, what shall I give you? And Jacob said, you shall not give me anything. So he didn't want any gifts from this from this guy uh, he said if you will do this thing for me I will again feed and keep your flock so now he's making an agreement and for the next few years he's going to do this verse 32 let me pass through all your flock today removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep and all the brown ones among the lambs and the spotted and speckled among the goats and these shall be my wages so uh, he said, you let me go through and we'll, we'll pick out all the ones that, that uh, aren't uh, just pure white. Verse 33, so my righteousness will answer for me in time to come when the subject of my wages comes before you. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs will be considered stolen if it is with me. So in other words, he's saying those will be yours. The speckled and spotted will be mine. And he says, verse 33, he says, so my righteousness will answer for me. And um, uh, we'll just leave that lay. But anyway, um, he's going to try to do some some things to help his own uh, <laughs> to help his own prosperity. Verse 34. And Laban said, oh, that it were according to your word. So Laban knows about Jacob. Uh, and these two guys are have been uh, over the years have been like out trying to outsmart each other I suppose so he removed that day so this is Laban removed that day the male goats that were speckled and spotted all the female goats that were speckled and spotted and everyone that had some white on it and all the brown ones among the lambs and gave them into the hand of his sons then he put three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. So what they did is they went through, separated all the spotted and speckled, and Laban uh, put them in charge of his sons, and they went. They moved them three, uh, three days' journey away from Laban's uh, farm. Okay, so so that they they kind of knew that Jacob was up to something, and so they kind of knew. So they. They took Jacob's sheep and they put them way far away, the spotted and the speckled. And then Jacob stayed with Laban's to take care of them like, like he agreed to do. So now he's taking care of Laban's sheep and his sheep are three days journey away. Now, it says, verse 37, Jacob took for himself rods of green poplar and of almond and chestnut trees, peeled white strips in them and exposed the white which was in the rods and the rods which he had peeled he set before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink so that they should conceive when they came to drink now uh we're looking at this and and uh he's got this plan of taking some poplar and i don't know how poplar trees got so poplar but they are anyway there's a lot of them around especially everywhere i've ever lived there's been poplar trees so that was a joke so in verse 39 so the flocks conceived before the rods and the flocks brought forth streaked speckled and spotted and okay now i want you to understand that if we go to chapter 31 and verse 12 uh which we won't cover today but we will get there uh, God, God says, lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are streaked and speckled and gray spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. So God is the one who makes these things happen. Whether there was something to do with uh, uh, the, the, um, 
the uh, con conception because of the because of the rods. I'm a, I'm not a farmer. I don't know if that makes any difference. But if you when you get to the next chapter, you're going to see where God saw what was going on and made these things happen. It's God again. God doing what God does, and uh, we try to help Him sometimes and make and make a mess out of it. But anyway, so doesn't matter one way or the other. Uh, verse forty. Then Jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the street and all the brown in the flock of Laban. But he put his own flocks by themselves and did not put them with Laban's flock. So what happened was they became, when they would conceive and have a, have a baby lamb, uh, they were, there was a whole lot more that were were speckled and spotted. And, and Laban's lambs were still there and they were conceiving, but they weren't conceiving <laughs> the pure white lambs. So, uh, like I said, I believe God was taking care of it. But uh, anyway, so so basically Jacob's flocks are growing. Laban's flocks are not growing. And it came to pass in verse 41, whenever the stronger livestock conceived that Jacob placed rods before their eyes in the livestock in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he did not put them in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger were Jacob's. Uh, thus the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants and camels and donkeys. So this took a, this took a few years to happen and uh, imagine it was three or four years, something like that. And uh, anyway, it took some time for Jacob's flock to grow. And these last verse 41 through and 42 kind of point out um, that it's like the uh, the uh, uh, survival of the fittest, uh, the stronger, uh, the, when the stronger uh, livestock uh, would come to eat, then, then Jacob would do this thing. And uh, so then they would conceive and have stronger livestock. And when the weaker ones came, then they, they wouldn't. So, so Jacob's flock became, the, their, their uh, health was much better than, than Laban's. So anyway, that's the end of chapter 30. And what we find out here is that uh, uh, all the way through the, 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 uh, the first part, uh, Rachel is trying to help God so that she can have children. <laughs> and Jacob is trying to help God so he can have sheep. <laughs> but uh, it's funny how we do those, those kind of things. We're no different than them. And um, uh, the, the, the story continues in chapter 31, which we'll bring up next time. But I want to thank you for uh, coming by the Bible blog and, uh, and watching and listening. And uh, I hope it's been a blessing. And if you know Jesus as your Savior, you are blessed already. If you don't, then you want to consider thinking about turning your life over to him, letting him uh, take care of you and watch over you and bless you. And uh, it's a simple thing. You just confess your sins to him. Uh, tell him you want him to become your Lord and Savior and, and trust him with everything. And uh, he's, he's waiting if you haven't done that. Well, thank you for coming by the visit, and God bless you.